During a time when segregation was the societal standard, racism was widely practiced, and black Americans were widely discriminated against, the United States was in the shadow of Pearl Harbor and on the brink of World War II. At the same time, the U.S. was ranked the 16th largest military in the world and desperately needed pilots. Due to the uncertainty of another world war, coupled with a lack of military manpower, in 1939, the U.S. government created the Civilian Pilot Training Program. This federally funded and segregated program allowed black Americans to train on combat aircraft and learn how to fly in case of another war. These black American pilots would go on to become the Tuskegee Airmen who, against all odds, proved that black Americans in all aspects had the same mental and intellectual capacities as white Americans. In this video, we're going to take a look at a group of incredible men who broke down barriers and shattered stereotypes during one of the most tumultuous times in American history. For many years, the story of the Tuskegee Airmen, a group of African American airmen who flew combat missions in racially segregated units in World War II, was not well known to the American public. Although much research remains to be done, the story of these men has, in recent years, gained some much-deserved fame, thanks not only to memoirs and scholarly histories, but also to several emotional pictures, books, television shows, documentaries, and other pop culture references. Their story is one of triumph, as their exemplary performance helped pave the way for the integration of the United States Armed Services in 1948. The struggle of African Americans for greater roles in North American military conflict spans four centuries. Opportunities for African American participation in the U.S. military were always very limited and controversial. Quotas, exclusion, and racial discrimination were based on the prevailing attitude in the United States, particularly on the part of the U.S. military, that African Americans did not possess the intellectual capacity, aptitude, and skills to be successful fighters political pressure exerted by the black press, civil rights groups, historically black colleges and universities, and others resulted in the formation of the Tuskegee Airmen, making them an excellent example of the struggle by African Americans to serve in the United States military. In the early 1940s, key leaders within the United States Army Air Corps, Army Air Forces, did not believe that African Americans had the intellectual capacity to become successful military pilots. Many of these opinions stemmed from a survey conducted in 1925 by the Army War College, now called the Department of Defense, titled The Employment of Negro Manpower in War. The survey states that an opinion held in common by practically all officers is that the Negro is a rank coward in the dark. His fear of the unknown and unseen will prevent him from ever operating as an individual scout with success. His lack of veracity causes unsatisfactory reports to be rendered particular on patrol duty. The NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, black media outlets and other black organizations fought against the report and its negative opinions. They pressured the U.S. military relentlessly for inclusion, desegregation, and fair treatment. Then in January of 1941, under the direction of the NAACP, Howard University student Yancey Williams filed a lawsuit against the War Department to compel his admission to a pilot training center. After succumbing to the pressure exerted by civil rights groups and African-American leaders, the Army decided to train a small number of African-American pilot cadets under special conditions. Although prejudice and discrimination against African-Americans occurred throughout the nation, it was more intense in the South, where it had hardened into rigidly enforced patterns of segregation. Such was the environment in which the military chose to locate the training of the Tuskegee Airmen. On January 16, 1941, Secretary of the Army Henry L. Stimson authorized the formation of a black pursuit squadron. This unit was to be called the 99th Pursuit Squadron. It wasn't until March 22, 1941, that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt officially activated the all-black World War II Fighter Squadron. This squadron activation was the first step in the Tuskegee Airmen experiment. This experiment, which was expected to fail by the U.S. government, allowed black Americans enlisted in the military to be tested to see if they could be trained as combat pilots and support personnel. During this experiment, the airmen were required to meet the typical standards of the military, including having a college education, as well as reaching the same fitness goals set by the Army. Once enlisted, this group of black American military members served and trained in Tuskegee, Alabama. 
the military selected Tuskegee Institute, later known as Tuskegee University, as a civilian contractor for a variety of reasons. These reasons were due to the school's existing facilities, engineering and technical instructors, and a climate with ideal flying conditions year-round, and the racial climate of central Alabama. Tuskegee Institute's strong interest in providing aeronautical training for African-American youth was also an important factor. Tuskegee's students and faculty had designed and constructed Moton Field as a site for its military pilot training program and named it for the school's second president, Robert Rusa Moton. In 1941, the contract was awarded to Tuskegee Institute to operate a primary flight school at Moton Field. Consequently, Tuskegee Institute was one of very few American institutions and the only African-American institution to own, develop, and control facilities for military flight instruction. Moton Field was the only primary flight training facility for African-American pilot candidates in the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II. Thus, the facility symbolizes the entrance of African-American pilots into the Army Air Corps and the singular role of Tuskegee Institute in providing economic and educational resources to make that entry possible, although on a segregated basis. On July 19, 1941, 12 aviation cadets and one student officer, Captain Benjamin O. Davis, Jr., reported to Tuskegee Institute to start flight training as the first black pilot candidates in the U.S. Army. By November, four cadets and the student officer had passed and were transferred to Tuskegee Army Airfield for basic and advanced training. On March 7, 1942, the first class of cadets graduated from Tuskegee Army Airfield to become the nation's first African-American military pilots, now known as the Tuskegee Airmen. Following this accomplishment, over 16,000 Tuskegee Airmen trained in Alabama. Approximately 996 of those airmen were pilots, and out of them, 352 were deployed and fought in combat. While there were more African-American men in the program, there were also male and female mechanics of different races, plus many women who operated as test pilots and parachute technicians. The Tuskegee Airmen were the first African-American soldiers to successfully complete their training and enter the Army Air Corps. In April 1943, the Tuskegee trained 99th Pursuit Squadron deployed to North Africa, which the Allies had occupied. In North Africa and then Sicily, they flew missions in second-hand P-40 planes, which were slower and more difficult to maneuver than their German counterparts. After the commander of the 99th's assigned fighter group complained about the squadron's performance, Davis had to defend his men before a War Department committee. Rather than being shipped home, the 99th was moved to Italy, where they served alongside the white pilots of the 79th fighter group. In early 1944, pilots from the 99th shot down 12 German fighters in two days, going some distance toward proving themselves in combat. In February 1944, the 100th, 301st, and 302nd fighter squadrons arrived in Italy. Together with the 99th, these squadrons of black pilots and other personnel made up the new 332nd Fighter Group. After this transfer, the pilots of the 332nd began flying P-51 Mustangs to escort the heavy bombers of the 15th Air Force during raids deep into enemy territory. The tails of their planes were painted red for identification purposes, earning them the enduring nickname Red Tails. Though these were the best known of the Tuskegee Airmen, Black aviators also served on bomber crews in the 477th Bombardment Group, formed in 1944. A popular myth arose during the war, and persisted afterwards, that in more than 200 escort missions, the Tuskegee Airmen had never lost a bomber. The truth wasn't uncovered until years later, when a detailed analysis found that enemy aircraft shot down at least 25 bombers they escorted. Nonetheless, that was a much better success rate than other escort groups of the 15th Air Force, which lost an average of 46 bombers. Oftentimes, these black airmen flew double the number of combat missions as white pilots, were treated poorly by fellow military members throughout their service, and continued to experience racism, despite being newly included in the pilot program, including while being overseas, according to Richard Baugh, son of Lieutenant Colonel Howard Baugh of the Tuskegee Airmen. His father flew 136 combat missions, while white pilots were typically rotated out after 50 missions. Because of the Tuskegee Airmen, the U.S. won World War II in August of 1945. 
In total, the Tuskegee Airmen flew over 15,000 individual missions and shot down 112 enemy airplanes in World War II. The Tuskegee Airmen's contribution to the war effort was not limited to their military service. They also challenged the prevailing racial attitudes of the time. By excelling in their training and combat, they proved that African Americans were just as capable as any other race of serving their country with distinction. The Airmen's efforts paved the way for future generations of African Americans to serve in the military without prejudice. Despite the Airmen's record of success, they faced discrimination and racism in and out of the military. The Airmen were not allowed to use the same facilities as their white counterparts, and often had to fight for their rights within the military. Despite these challenges, the Airmen continued to serve with dedication and professionalism. After the war, the Tuskegee Airmen continued challenging discrimination and fighting for civil rights. Many Airmen pursued successful careers in business, education, and politics. Their legacy inspired future generations of African American leaders and military personnel. Seven years after the pilot training program began, President Harry Truman changed the Army's policies by signing an executive order ending segregation in the United States military, marking the Tuskegee Airmen's second victory. This was a turning point in the way the military handled race and is widely credited to the Tuskegee Airmen's struggles and victories. A number of the original Tuskegee Airmen would go on to longer careers in the military, including Davis, who would become the first black general in the new U.S. Air Force. George S. Spanky Roberts, who became the first black commander of a racially integrated Air Force unit before retiring as a colonel, and Daniel Chappie James Jr., who would become the nation's first black four-star general in 1975. In recognition of their service, the Tuskegee Airmen were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 2007, and a monument was erected in their honor in Washington, D.C. The Airmen's contribution to the military during World War II will always be remembered as a testament to their courage, dedication, and unwavering commitment to their country, even in the face of adversity. The Tuskegee Airmen's contribution to the military during World War II was significant and far-reaching. They served their country with distinction and challenged the discriminatory attitudes of the time. Their legacy continues to inspire future generations of Americans and is a testament to the courage and patriotism of all who have served in the military. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like and subscribe.